Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and I'm trusting the Spirit of God that every prophecy that has been spoken over your life, you will begin to see fulfillment in this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you today. Listen, your going out will bring you progress today. Your coming in shall be with testimonies today. I declare over your life that today you will experience the graciousness of God. This week, you will see God's token of love for your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you, can you just, if you can, stretch your hands this way. Father, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your grace is poured out to these ones that are watching right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the things that have been spoken and written concerning their life. I declare, just like Jesus taught us to pray, that your pray that your will of the will of God be done on earth in their lives as it is written in heaven. Thank you for your Spirit that gives us entrance into the things that have been spoken and written concerning us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of Jesus, any sickness in your body is healed right now. Your body is cleansed from such diseases. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your skin is cleansed. Yes, your skin is cleansed. I see someone, you're having some skin irritation. You've been, you've been struggling with that issue for a while. Right now, I declare that your skin is cleansed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Be free. And all those rashes and spots are going away. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Hallelujah. It's a great week. Hallelujah. That bill is being paid completely. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your expectation this week will not be cut short. You know why? Because the Lord is fulfilling every prophecy that he has spoken over your life. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Father I declare in the name of Jesus that burdens are being lifted right now and yokes are being destroyed. Whatever burden that has been in your heart right now receive the grace. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive the grace to come out of that body right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Ah, I know it's going to be an exciting week. I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, we've been talking about fulfilling prophecies. And I showed you from the children of Israel how God spoke See, and, and I told you something, that word was not provoked by anything. Now, one thing you need to understand about prophecies is this. There are situational prophecies. In other words, prophecies that we, we can provoke God to prophesy into our lives. Yeah, we can do that. Now, but in all, every prophecy fulfills the will of God. But why did I say situational prophecy? Now, those are prophecies that are mostly dependent on you. Now, I'll give you an example. You remember when the children of Israel asked God for a king. And God gave them Saul. Now, if you study the scriptures, Moses had told the children of Israel that a time is going to come that they are going to ask for a king. Now Moses was speaking by the Spirit of God. And Moses clearly told them that when that time comes, this is what they should look out for. Now, they didn't wait for that time. They looked around their surrounding and felt like, who want to be like every other nation? So, Samuel, give us a king and the amazing thing about it they had a legitimate a legitimate reason for asking for a king 
So what's their reason? I'll tell you. You remember Eli was the one ruling because then the priest and the prophet were the ones ruling them because God was raising judges. You know, so it got to this point. Eli was the one giving them direction. And then you know how, how it happened. Samuel came up and then Samuel was now giving them direction. Now Samuel was old. He was getting old in age. And then they looked at Samuel's children. They were nothing to write home about for whatever reason. They were nothing to write home about. And then they looked at it and said, man, if Samuel dies today, is one of these his sons that is going to be giving us direction. I mean, those guys are, uh -uh, no way, it can't work. So they began to think, what do we do? What do we do? The best thing they should have done was to pray and ask the Lord. Lord, what's your plan for us? Samuel is getting old. But they didn't. They began to look around and then ah, no, 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 this one, no, this one. You know, it's amazing. They said, no, not this, these guys. Nah, 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 nah. These guys can't rule over us. So what do we do? You know what? I think it's high time we start having a king. So it came to their mind. So they went to Samuel and said, Samuel, give us a king like the other nations. So let's have someone who's going to lead us as a ruler, not as a prophet, you know, as a, as a ruler. We want a king. <laughs> now understand this. They had gotten used to God directing them, God telling them what to do through his prophets. Now they said, we want to have a king like the other nations. So they had to depend on God. That's why they went to the prophet. That's why they didn't call for a referendum so they would hold an election and do democracy. No. They said, look, give us a king. So they expected Samuel to hear from the Lord. And said, this is what the Lord says. This is your king. And, and the Bible said the thing displeased Samuel. Why did it displease Samuel? Because it was coming from them. And, and what their eyes were on was not the right thing. See, they were looking at Samuel's children. They were not looking at God. So if they were looking at God, they should have said, Wow, Samuel, you've been a great you know, leader to us. And I'm sure God, we are sure God has something great or greater you know, for us. So, so what's God's plan for us next? That's the attitude they would have approached that. Now, it would have been left for God to say, all right, I think it's high time you guys start having kings. Are you seeing it now? Now, so when they said, give us a king like the other nations, they compared themselves to the other nations. They didn't come. They forgot what God had told them. When they were leaving Egypt, Moses told them something. He said, hey, no, you know, when they were in the wilderness, look, if you guys will obey my word, I'm going to make you a kingdom of priests. See? So they were not like the other nations. Now, these are the things I was telling you last week about having understanding. And that's why prophecies are not fulfilled in many people's lives. Not because God is not powerful enough to fulfill them, but because they are not synchronizing their thoughts and ideas with the wisdom of God. See? So, God, God is saying one thing and they are thinking something else. But they feel we are all thinking the same thing. No. God had a plan to give them a king. But they hadn't gotten to that point where they aligned their minds to the kind of king that God wanted them to have. See? Now then, they told, oh, give us a king. And Samuel said, all right, uh, I'll pray about it. And he went before the Lord. God said, hey, relax. It's not you they rejected. It's me they rejected that I should rule over them. So God says, I would have given them who should rule over them. But they preferred, they want to do it themselves. Now, even that, so God now said, okay, Samuel, take your horn of oil. I'm going to send a, the one who's going to be king to you. And then he sent Saul. You know the story if you've read the scriptures. Saul went, you know, on, on, on that journey looking for the ass of his father. And then he met Samuel. And then Samuel gave him the prophecy. Now, that was a situational prophecy. And most times, situational prophecies come with an instruction. See, 
Now, all you need to do to cause the prophecy to be fully fulfilled is to keep the instruction that comes with it. Are you following what I'm saying now? For example, Samuel told, the scripture reference is on the screen, so you can, you can read it all. Samuel told Saul, that, hey, told him what's going to happen. Say, as you leave me, you're going to come into, you're going to meet some men. They are going to be carrying this. And then you meet, you come into a company of prophets. Then the Spirit of God is going to come upon you. Now, all those things Samuel told him were not just signs. They all had their purpose. Now, Samuel gave him the last instruction Samuel gave him, which is now his part to do. Because the other one said, you will meet so and so person. You will see him carrying this. You will meet this one. The Spirit of God will come upon you. So those are things happening to him. The main part of the, that instruction says, when all these things come to pass, you will gather the people in, I think Gilgal also, and you will gather the people there. Then I will come and will offer the sacrifice that should be offered. Said, Have you heard me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if you read the story, Saul became king. He didn't remember the instruction that Samuel gave to him. Because every other sign, every other thing Samuel said is going to happen, happened until he was coronated as the king. But that instruction that Samuel, Samuel gave to him, that he should gather the people for that first sacrifice, he didn't do it. Now, when you read the scriptures, the Bible says, let me, let me read that scripture to you. 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 8. Look at this. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offering. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Did you see that? Now he had told him things that are going to happen. Then he now says, look. When all these things happen, not until the time you become king, the moment you become king, your first instruction as king is to gather the people at Gilgal. And you will wait for seven days. And, and, and then I will come and show you what you are to do. So you are supposed to receive your, um, your instruction as a king after that seven-day sacrifice. Right? So yes, sir. Now watch this. Chapter 13. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men. And then you, 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 you read the story. And then now notice, I want to show you something that it was on the third year. It was on the third year. Now there was a battle at hand. He wanted to go for that battle. Then he remembered the instruction that was given to him. However, he remembered, we were not told. Whether Samuel sent him, hey, don't go for that battle until you fulfill what God said. Now, it was a time of tension. So he gathered the people and then they, they were all there. Now, what, look at verse, you, you can read the whole chapter. I'm just speaking. Verse 8 now, chapter 13. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. When did Samuel had appointed seven days? Now, that's where I read to you before. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, bring Hepha. You know, you, you read the story now. Um, and it came to pass, verse 10. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the bond offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me. Now, he, 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 he began to give all the stupid reasons why he did what he did. He was not supposed to offer that sacrifice. And guess what? Now, look at what Samuel said. Oh, thank you, Holy Lord Jesus. Look at what Samuel said, verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Did you see this? First instruction he was supposed to receive, he missed it. And what happened? Samuel said, the kingdom would have been established unto you forever, but now, no more. It has been given to someone else. See, I said, this is a situational prophecy. Our time is up right now. We're going to continue 
tomorrow. Listen, step out today and let the glory of God shine on your path. Fulfill prophecies today in Jesus' name.